the reason they pick Luna and not Ember is because they want a slightly stronger lane stage. And, I mean, and then they lose the lane stage. Anyway. I think that too, but. I think most important is like if you look at the way they were drafting and picking. I think they had a solid idea that they wanted to give away uh, all the red heroes and they wanted to use a push rat. They had a clear plan what they wanted to do instead of they trying to counter pick the enemy like yeah. what we see Secret did against That's, Alliance. I think they also wanted to kind of maybe try to force Bulldog into the jungle early. Like, they didn't want to let him stay so, there, but they it just didn't work. Yeah, I was going to say, did Alliance get first pick again? So, they did use the the bands no. and, and the first pick. No, they switched it got first pick, yeah. yeah. Well, before it was the other way. Ten um, seconds to they did use both their first pick and their two bands to counter pick, but it's not the Chen. So, they're actually hurry, giving away hurry. the Chen. Yeah. Is, do, do Alliance just jump on the Chen now, or...? I think you do. I think Chen's too good to not. Which, but which hero would you pick up together with the Chen? Ooh, Lone Druid perhaps. <laughs> Lone Druid has been their most consistent they've been, prospect. They've been a lot of... Uh, if they Lone can't Druid, get the bad rider, they, they want Lone get, Druid Puck. They might get Puck though here. Yeah. Because yeah. judging by the uh, they also, picks before. They also might just not think that EG was going to pick the pick the Chen. Yeah, but then they, EG would ban the they, Chen after. That yeah. is a good so, second phase ban, you're right. So what's the, the Puck versus Bath matchup okay, like? So they do it's going to be the it. Chen. If they get Puck, is, is Puck good against Bath mid 1v1, do you think? Uh, I don't think they're going to get the Puck. I think, I think it depends back. on like a lot of uh, individual play. I definitely don't think that it's going to be a matchup that one has a very heavy favor. But I agree with Shiva that like, you expect they'll probably ban the Puck now yeah. in the next we, phase. Uh, we've actually seen... So Samil plays Batrider in offlane. Mm. Uh, a lot of that leaves Arteezy going mid. We've seen him mid uh, on the OD, actually, mm. in this very scenario yeah. where they yeah. had a Batrider offlane. Are we going to see OD here? Does it fit? Is OD oh, good against Bear? Other than, I know he's the, the old school like lane Sorry. counter, but does he work well like mid game against Bear, do you think? Um, it's pretty good at killing the Bear, but like you mentioned, it's like the overall strategy. The OD is a, a hero that is very slow paced. Mm. So. I'm not sure whether it will be good because Chen Lone Druid is not slow paced. It's very fast paced. Yeah. They're gonna right. be always taking your tower, trying to force the issue. So playing slow pace might be not so good for their early game. Since yeah. like what we saw in the last game, their early game was they just got overrun by Alliance. So the thing is now when Alliance get Chen, uh, the, the every every strategy Alliance have depends on having a really good early game, having a really good lane Let's stage. And with these two down. openers, the Lone Druid's gonna be fine on his own, Radiant and that means the rest of the heroes can focus on just two lanes, and one of the heroes is a Chen. Mm -hmm. And so I feel like that already gives them an advantage in those lanes and EG need to, I mean, they have to have a plan for like, how do you stop the Chen from winning the lane stage for lanes? And I really like this Witch Doctor counter pick. Uh, it does pretty well with the Chen. We saw, we've seen two real mains, like support counter picks to Chen and one in uh, Crystal CM. Maiden, yeah. which I didn't think was was too great, but... No, I only lost this one. Yeah, and, but, and then Witch Doctor because of the stun being able to go full duration but on the creeps. If you look at how EG were drafting oh, the past few series, they're always open with Witch Doctor because yeah. Witch Doctor is good versus Furin. He's good versus Chen. Yeah. He's, he's good versus all the heroes. The that, bear, uh, as well, all yeah, the pushing heroes. I think. Yeah. I think just their Witch Doctor has had a couple of things, kind of indirect buffs to him. I think Aetherlands. He's one of the better carriers. He's really good against a lot of the meta heroes. I think that's why we're seeing him so high so up in a lot of these traps. My question: Witch Doctor is good against Chen, but the more specific question I want to know is how they're gonna make sure that Chen doesn't win the the lane stage. Is, is Witch Doctor good against Chen in the lane stage already? Because you don't have high enough level cask. I feel to like. And you also can't, is Witch Doctor, is Witch Doctor always going to be there when the Chen comes mm -hmm. in and his creeps? I think against Chen, you want to have 2-1-2 two, two set up though. Like Witch Doctor would help one lane, and you want someone else to help the bad rider to secure the lanes. Then you, you force uh, the Chen to decide where he can help. If you do stand up 1-1-3 one, one, set up against a jungler, the jungler can pressure two lanes, and two lanes will be under a lot of uh, early game, you know, harassed from the Chen. So I think that the laning phase is very important against the Chen. Like but how, they, how you place your but lanes. if they're doing 2-1-2, two, two, then they need a really strong support to deal with the Lone Druid. Yeah, I'm, think, I'm thinking if they... I mean, if it's 2-1-2, two, two, I think the Witch Doctor will be against the Lone Druid, and then they'll pick another hero for the Bat Rider. Maybe like a strength, like strength hero like Undying or whatever. Like so a they, they picked a the Ogre hero. before as well? Ogre? Yeah, uh, they picked it in the previous game. Yeah, it's similar. It's good o with the bear, really Ogre, good Undying. Well, a lot of uh, targeted S4 bands. Mm -hmm. And some... I actually think uh, Universe... Band, do you, do you think, sorry, I I think the universe is gonna play bats in this game. I, I I have a feeling that Samil wants another shot at S4. <laughs> um, so unless they might put Ten the bats in the mid lane, but I think if the bats going to the off lane as we're expecting, then I mean universe can play a good bat. They did it one time, right? I, yeah. I remember there was one game uh, Sumel played the bat in the event. Yeah. Universe definitely has more experience with bats, so I, I wouldn't be surprised the, if they do do it. The game where you, it's still pretty open for me now, though. The game where Sumel played bat was where they had a void. They wanted mm. to have both. It's true. Um, actually, you know, he played bat twice. So Mel played one mid bat and one off lane bat, I think. Oh, yeah, you're oh, right. yeah, that's right. Because right. yeah. when they did, did the OD pick, it was Sumail on the bat, you're right. 
So right now, Alliance usually goes for the Rubik with the Chen. They are one of the few teams that specifically wants the Rubik. Like some teams would prefer Venge more. Like personally, I like Venge and Chen more because of the and they're on Dial on the Roshan. But I know that they like the Rubik more because of a few reasons. Like it's a bit easier to initiate early with the lift, it's yep. farther range, and you have the null feel for the push. Right. Those are two, the two things that are really good. If you grab one of those uh, small creeps for your push oh, as well. This game they went for the bench. <laughs> oh wow. It's because there's a bench, Oh yeah, because right? of the bad rider. Yeah, yeah. That's smart. That's smart. But actually, I think this... So, it, I mean, it's a slightly better pick because of the bat and because of the witch doctor too, but... It actually weakens alliance because this lane phase a bit. It like, puts a lot more pressure on the chain because Venge is not so good in lane stage. It's okay though. I think Venge is pretty good now. Because you can, if you see how, like, especially uh, Peter Panem, how he plays the bench, sometimes he gets the terror at level 1, mm -hmm. and then you howl and you know, often just basically, if it's 1v1, he can't trade with you. Because okay. bench has such good stats and armor. Yeah. So Universe Batrider, definitely an option, but we've also seen in the past, Universe Zeus. Yeah. Yeah, I think this is more likely to be Sumail Zeus, though. I think them not picking the Rubik is what led into this, this Zeus pickup to try to just deal, just to have some strong counter push against the Chen creeps. It's, I think it's basically even if they went for the Rubik, they might still go for Zeus because they wanted a mid that can just deep push, you know. We've seen okay. a lot of teams use Zeus against Chen. I mean, it might be one of the considerations, but I, I think that mainly they wanted a mid that can deep push. And it works really well with Batrider because what works well with Batrider is vision. You want to be able to give him vision so he can lasso. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's a good point. I think they actually the game that EG lost against LGD was the one where Samil played Zeus. Hmm. I mean, I, that's obviously not significant, but. And then. Oh, can, they pick, can they pick AA here? Do they actually play AA? Have they played AA in the tournament? Uh, uh, they haven't played in the tournament, We've but they could definitely. I mean, PPD. I mean, PPD they, won a TI five on. They picked. Do you remember they picked AA in the grand final, like yeah. out of nowhere? So yeah, it's, yeah. Uh, it's, uh, I like the Spectre. Spectre. I like the Spectre pick. I mean, it's it's synergy it's, with their draft it's, ready. So it's global. It's global. The bad AA now, surely they've got it. Like, but I don't know if EG plays the AA. <laughs> No, no, we, they played it in CR5 Grand Finals. Yeah, PBD. It was the $6 million... Uh, yeah, the but yeah, the, wor the worrying part about picking an A into the lineup is, again, Wish Doctor and A, I would classify them both as same positions so about yeah. a lot of levels. Uh, well, Who are you going to sacrifice? Yeah, it's very hard to play like this. I know, it, I know it's good with that drop, but it's very hard PPD to play. PBD kind of is oh, okay with the... Yeah, they're, they're okay with the, just a really poor AA. They've done that before. Mm -hmm. Well, they're not going to get any AA, not even a poor one. Yeah. So let's see what... As, as I was probably going to go Magnus this game, yeah, I guess. I was trying to think of $6 million Vortex, because it buffed oh, the damage of the Echo Slam. Oh, <laughs> it, it, yeah. <laughs> the other hero that he's played in S4's played, played in this tournament is Death Prophet. Do you think they could pick Death uh, Prophet? Yeah. Oh, we're they, seeing a wave! They might Five prefer Magnus three. a bit more because of Juggernaut. Yeah, but Death Prophet is also... We have not seen the Magnus from S4 at all. Yeah, he hasn't played it recently, but it is one of his classic heroes. It's like, you want to have a playmaker mid. I think that's one of... Uh, like he, a, he plays yeah. like three best, like Batrider, Park, and Magnus. Those three are his best playmaking mid heroes. I mean, that's the thing about how... Like, we talk about Alliance, the defining thing about them really is that they have an offlane player who plays carry and a mid player who always yeah, plays like yeah. utility. That's their roles are different based on their lanes. Yeah. <laughs> Bulldog has been averaging something like, I haven't looked at it since uh, yesterday, but he was averaging something like 100. Yeah, I mean, it's, more it's than not fair to compare him to the other offlaners because he did, he gets different treatment from his team compared yeah, to the other offlaners. That's what I'm saying, he gets, he, gets, he gets the highest farm share out of his team like, significantly DP? more. Like, no other offlaner gets does, that much. Does it have to be the Magna? Because they ban the DP? Although, I think mm -hmm. actually the heroes on EG are quite good at stopping Nag from blinking. In. Yeah, they have Zeus and Spectre, so they might go for something else. They need a tempo controller for sure. Someone Which to make space. Be, uh, oh. Not for that, I mean Lina? Is that still an option? Is that too squishy? I don't think they'll pick Lina. Lina gets picked as a... He as takes a, space, Lina yeah. takes space. It gets picked more as a carry these days, like a... Damage. No, man, like Magnus seems like the only... What other playmakers are there right now? Nice oh, there we go. Oh, yeah. That's actually an yeah, escort hero as well. Yeah, that's good. Re really good versus the bad rider. It's a counter. We saw that a yeah. lot from MV yeah. MVP Hot 6, where they always pick Night Stalker yeah. against Bad Rider to limit the vision. Yeah, yeah if is going to be trying to go for this global vision, like always knowing like how they're going to gank, where they're going to gank, it's good for Night Stalker to be able to try mm. to scout that out a little bit. His early. laning phase against Zeus should also be really good. So overall, Alliance got their heroes. <laughs> yeah. yeah. S4's also been really big on getting ganks like immediately after runes so like, mm -hmm. he's been like as for he, rune is big he, he, was, he was he was helping out top four minutes into the game last game so like he got this, a i think this works out for uh, s4 a lot so, winter you're time. saying that you think that the witch doctor will be against the bear which means it's the ppd hero and they're picking the fear one now oh because, maybe a fear here i think a fear hero you fear. think so okay because yeah. usually fear's the one who goes with the off lane and mm -hmm. ppd stays at the safe lane yep. so, mm -hmm. 
But then again, I might I think that they might also consider they might need three heroes because Lone Druid versus Spe like Spectre lane is yeah, so weak. Rain, they might need really all the supports to help the Spectre here. And does the bat need help? Can as long as you stack for him. Yeah, I think they'll just stack for him and kind of, kind of, sort of sat, sack, soft sack the off lane and early. PPD like, actually really doesn't mind yeah. doing that. And, and they're gonna block the camp. So you, you, do you see in the last game where how they both teams prioritize in blocking the off lane camps? Like both sides of the camps were blocked from both teams. Yeah. So those are the few things that are really, really important in this game. We actually saw a game yesterday where I was asking Winter, why does PPD not go to the off lane when Universe left it? And it, we saw it just because he was just stacking. So right. he'll be very happy to do that tonight. I think it makes good sense then that they might just both be... It's just a yeah. dazzle for PPD. I feel like that's almost too safe, but no, I'm They need a tanker, like Undying. They need a strength I still hero, think I it's the like. fear hero coming. Yeah, Undying or what? Spirit Break. They need something Venom like Mancer. a tanky. A Venomancer. Oh, defending the push. And then it, PPD, it, fits, PPD it fits your lineup because it has a uh, synergy team fight. Venom ulti plus Zeus ulti plus Spectre ulti. Okay, so a lot of magic damage. <laughs> We want, we want to see a third game. So what does EG need to do to get a third game? Quick answer. Anything that the team, that the viewers have to They have to, to survive the laning phase. Yeah. And get into the mid game where they have superior team fight. Okay, let's see if EG makes it to that mid game. Winter wants to have him there. Let's see if the casters can take him there as well. It is time for LD and Gods with game two of EG versus Alliance. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. We're getting ready for game two of EG versus Alliance Gods. Do you think EG have the draft to take it? I think they do, but for me, it's just Alliance who's been playing better as a team. People have been asking, are Alliance back, LD? Let me tell you, Alliance are back, baby! They're back, LD! You it's are the most <laughs> disgusting turncoat I have ever seen in my life. Hey! I was just cast just cursing them all throughout the tournament, helping them on their way. No, Alliance are just... This is a team who's won, won over the hearts of Dota 2 fans just all around the world. The game starts. I, I mean, you, you can't doubt them at this point. They have proven time and time again. They can't be stopped. Well, they've proven that you were wrong, and now you're Absolutely. admitting it. I am wrong, LD. Gods was left. But Alliance was right. <laughs> Here we go. Game two, about to begin. They're ready for it. Ake on the Chen. Off the bat makes an aggressive move into the enemy woods. He does get the sentry down here to block that hard camp. Also an observer ward planted down off near the mid lane. So we get underway with PPD. None the wiser from the looks of things. They did not scout out the Chen. As for the dire off lane, no such attempt, at least not yet. And you can see Bulldog, he's protecting his big camp. That's becoming a, a big part of this new patch with that new camp by the secret shop is positioning your heroes such that you can defend it being blocked. A hero like Lone Druid needs to be able to farm it. Batrider, maybe to a slightly lesser extent, but maybe EG just looked to contest the lanes. For now, both supports headed down bottom though. The rune's about to spawn now. The crowd is ready to go. I see an American flag there in the audience. <laughs> Looks like Sumail will get to the bounty room bottom, and S4, the one up top. So this is going to be a Night Stalker versus Zeus mid. Very unusual matchup. And I think, like Winter said, Night Stalker actually does surprisingly well on this lane. Very tanky. The Chain Lightning spam doesn't bother him as much as the, the squishier mids. He can also just void him and run at him. And the right clicks really hurt as Zeus has low armor and very poor move speed. And it's also the fact that on top of that, Alliance have a Chen, a hero who's very good at ganking mid heroes with no escape, such as Zeus, such as Death Prophet. And as a result, there's always that threat of an early Ake smoke rotation catching Sumail by surprise. As for just trying to get the bottle out as quickly as possible, he's only got the two tangos and he should have it with this wave. So it is going to be the universe Batrider in the end, not Sumail. He heads to the off lane and we see EG running their tri lane, but Bulldog is getting his customary early start in the jungle. Definitely one of the beautiful things about running a lone druid in the off lane. Yeah, and something that EG have just kind of decided they can't really contest, they're not going to be able to prevent it. A lot harder to block that camp from the Radiant side if it goes so deep to the other side of the map. And S4, Bottle already picked up, he'll be just fine, despite all the early harass coming his way. Yeah, he's already got five stick charges as well. He's just keeping the courier there, he'll bottle crow once and then try and secure himself probably a two minute rune. And even if he doesn't get a two minute rune, he'll just keep on bottle crowing throughout the early game. Yeah, so mid seems like it'll be mostly a, a wash early on here. Uh, as for the cores, we are going to see Juggernaut getting essentially free farm now in the off lane with Batrider retreating out of the lane back into his own jungle. Yeah, he's, he's effectively quad laning. He is actually at the pull camp 
Very with the Witch unusual. Doctor. Needs to get level 2 before he can really go farm any kind of stacks. Has the one point in Firefly, needs the Napalm on top of this, and for now, Fear is just kind of helping him out. He's pinging, he's saying, let's get this raid, deny the range creep, then let's kill it. Just good kind of creep equilibrium control coming out from EG. Ah, Fear, stealing his last hits. Yeah, like the, you said, the mostly about the here. <laughs> they make sure the camp respawns though. Yeah. And both teams will be going kind of greedy in the laning stage, but uh, as far as greedy goes, it's Alliance who have the offlaner who loves to farm and he gets more with farm. And they have the Chen. And yep. if you leave Ake alone and he doesn't feel I, a need to gank, he can get a lot of If you look at here. Alliance series just in the minimap, there are five heroes scattered around the map, no one really protecting anyone, just everyone kind of getting their own farm in different locations. EG have three heroes come together in the, the tri lane. The Batrider nearby jungling as well. So very much like just from sheer positioning, Alliance are getting an adv advantage, getting more farm, more experience out of the lane. Yeah, you can see they've got four heroes uh, who are decent in terms of CS here. Even the Venge getting some, and meanwhile, EG with three heroes with a collective seven CS. And it's always that that scary threat of the chain ganks I mentioned earlier. They could be coming anytime, and that's something EG are going to be wary of. They're already sending the Witch Doctor towards the mid lane, expecting that kind of a rotation to be happening soon. With Korea head to top, I wonder if that's going to be delivering something such as a smoke to the Chen to try and make such a move. Yeah, it's a Zeus mid, but this... with everybody kind of missing and in the jungle, I, I imagine Alliance may be expecting support to be, just be camping out yeah. that mid lane. So. And that's the thing, like if you're Alliance, you're like, well, they're going to expect the Chen smoke rotation. They've got a Witch Doctor who can just cast the creep. Let's farm, baby. Yeah, let's farm. Like, EG theoretically either have to, if they're protecting mid lane and there's no games coming, they're wasting time, they're not farming. So the safer play for Alliance is just to say, well, Night Stalk is doing fine. He's actually getting plenty of farm in his mid lane. They he doesn't also, actually need the ganks. They can also just take the tier one early. We've seen this from Alliance that if they don't see gank opportunities, they'll just group up yeah. with the Chen plus whoever the pushing carry is, and they'll look for the early tower, which is precisely what's happening right now in the top lane. They do have a Witch Doctor here, but against such a large army with the Healing Ward going, it's not something that Fear can stop on his own. Maybe the Bat Rider heads up top, but he's also in danger of being killed off should he engage. Um, nice, nicely played by, by Fear to actually draw the aggro of some of the creep wave Radiant off of the tower, which will delay the push and also get him a bit of farming experience. So. It's still going though. They've got yeah. quite a decent amount remaining in the lane with the Chen creep. This, this will be enough Radiant for the early tier one. Very fast tier one. We'll see who gets the last hits for Alliance. EGM just, just scouting a bit as they look to secure it, and Radiant the creeps get it. This is just such typical Alliance. They're winning the laning stage, and not just like by a small margin. They're getting more out of most of the lanes, and they've got a jungle hero I it's just time and time again they draft these heroes they play the early game in such a way that you can't pressure them well it's certainly not pressuring when, them. when the other team has a, a specter and a Zeus these are not the the lane dominators yes yeah. for, for sure. EG it, everything comes together when they hit that bat right of blink dagger oh, they want Bulldog they are gonna connect with the gale this might be a big kill for Arteezy yeah Bulldog trapped out even the wards coming through Sumail says that's mine pops the ult gets the experience and first blood is claimed I love that. <laughs> Brutal. They should they should do it for every event, whether it's like an ultra kill or. I hope there's a rampage. I hope we get a rampage at some point. I was mentioning this to Winter yesterday during our cast that it's actually more intense than when a team actually wins a match. The first blood animation and noise yeah. is, is more just. Typically, when, by crazy. the time the GG is called, like you kind of know it's already over. It doesn't happen in like one sudden moment. So, well, if this series goes at all like the way the group stage match did, maybe it comes down to an epic base race. So, not sure EG quite have the horses for that against the lone druid, but yep. a man can dream. I mean, as far as EG, what they're looking to do, it's not winning the laning stage. So they've accepted the fact Alliance will get a bit more early on. They can be greedy with the Chen. They are going to look for a kill here. Nice cast coming out from the Witch Doctor. The bolt follow up and S4. Close base booting up. away with a one. The stick. He'll survive. And importantly, the Zeus ultimate was on cooldown. Otherwise, that would have been a kill. But that was something S4 was also wary of and managed to play around. Well, still, they're getting a lot of help here for Sumail. Off to a way better start than last game. But Chen creeps are moving in. They want to contest this rune. And it is currently nighttime. Sumail, silent up, nuked down by Ake, and it's gonna fall, S4 is gonna hunt for more. Moving on to Fear, juking a bit through the trees, but the Void does almost half his health and damage. There's the heal. Can they turn this one? Fairy Fire gets committed. They're gonna nuke down the Chen Creeps. Alliance won their pursuit, but only for a moment. They re-engage. Fear taking another Void. Cask bouncing out. They just can't seem to wrangle the Vampire. S4 able to back away. So much space created for him. 
And that Zeus kill, very big for Alliance. Slows down one of the big tempo controls for EG and one of the, kind of the key cores for them. Something he just completely got caught by surprise. I think for Sumail, he's like, oh, I can get this rune because Night Stalker, we almost killed him. Surely he's back to Fountain, but he had the 10, the 10 one charges, I want to say, as well as a salve. So the fact he still had a salve allowed him to back off. It was even more than that because he's got the upgraded magic one. Man, he was full HP. He contests the rune and Sumail's just suddenly like, wait, how are you full HP? How are you actually able to come here and contest this? So really heads up play from Alliance, knowing that they were still in a position to try and contest it. And Aether Lens, Night Stalker coming up? Is that Could just be a casual, casual cloak? cloak as yeah, well. rush into like a, a hood slash pipe. Early magic resistance against Zeus, even the casual cloak, always amazing. I mean, honestly, having a longer range void or silence doesn't sound yeah. too bad. Uh, but it could be a casual one. We'll wait and see. I mean, for me, the story of the game is not only did the lanes go well early, but now Alliance have just created so much space for the side lanes. And on the back of that, Bulldog's Lone Druid is catching a bottom. They're just leaving a Spectre there currently. And up in the top lane, it's been absolute free farm for Loda, who's 8 CS up on the, the enemy Spectre, who had a full try lane the entire game until recently. I don't think EG have to particularly worry. They won't be pleased with the early game, but their lineup's timing is Batrider, Blink Dagger. You find a Blink Lasso, you've got Haunt, you've got Thunder God's Wrath. These ultis, when combined with the Batrider's pickoff potential, is kind of like the bread and butter of EG's strategy right now. That's really at the heart of what they're trying to do. Find pickoffs with Bat, then transition into the late game with a farm Zeus, with, more importantly, a farm Spectre. There's almost no doubt in my mind this will be a fighting Spectre build. We'll see the urn, the drums, Radiant possibly even something like a Manta style. He's already got the phase in the urn, probably something like a drums to follow. Yeah, Bracer Recipe. Oh, so it's a Bracer Recipe for Loda as well. He's going for the fighting items. And I think he knows that what Arteezy is going to do is try and fight, so he's trying to match it with his own rotation, with his own involvement in this game. Uh, RTZ last game was playing a very squishy carry in the Luna. This time around, looks like he will be tanking up. Spectre can take a lot more chances in fights and live to tell the tale, so I think he's got a better shot at not chain feeding this time around. Luna is just not the play from behind, Zero. Uh, Universe back to the jungle. He's closing in with the Blink Dagger now, up to 1700 gold, roughly, and could have like a, around a 10 to 11 minute Blink Dagger, it would seem at this rate, but already Bulldog with the 9 minute Midas in the off lane when he got tri lane. It just shows you the importance of warding off that, off that hard camp. I mean, typical Alliance game. Bulldog's like middle of the pack in terms of net worth at 10 minutes in, then 20 minutes in. He's one of the most farmed heroes in the game. The siege begins. Arteezy slowly working on the tower, but Ake is storming down the river, looking for the backstab. They've got the TP coming from the Nightstalker. Darkness is available. Arteezy on the run. This will be a big kill. The first void is going to connect. Fears here with the cast. He's going to let it fly. Bounces to the bear. Pretty much perfect bounces, but Arteezy still being chased out. Is going to use the talent to try and juke through the trees. Well played, Fear. Able to get his buddy out safely. Very well done. Not giving up any kills against a big rotation I, from Alliance. I like Arteezy's TP home because he can actually haunt back in and re-engage. They've got two mail down here. GG won a fight. Oh, he's in Viz. He can scout ah, this out. They've got no Batrider in fine condition. It looks like Universe trying oh. to complete his blink at top lane. Do they not in fighting and, shape. Do they want to try and burst down the Juggernauts? The ping came out from PPD. But that's a tough kill. Yeah, it's I'm just an sure. Invis Zeus, like, uh, it's Sumail's like, okay, if there's only three heroes pushing, we could look to take this, but with the Jug rotation, that just secures this tier one tower. There is no way to defend this with Loda teeping in as well. And another, one time and time again, we see Loda make sure he's there for the key moments of the game. And for Alliance, this was going to be one of them. If EG tried to defend this, he had to make sure he was there and ready to go. For EG, they're like, well, we haven't got the bat right of Blink. He's also got no mana right now. We can't fight this. That's uh, just the nature of the EG draft. Spectre, Zeus, they take a while to really come online against these group up and fight strats and until the bat has the blink like you mentioned. Tough to quickly find a pick. EG did rotate out. They tried to put a little pressure on mid, but they don't have the best pushing lineup. The Venom Ward's decent, but outside of that, there's no Lone Druid or Lycan, Exhort Invoker. No one who can quickly pull those towers. So we do see Alliance hold the mid lane while they also make a move on bottom. They planted down an aggressive Observer Ward, and they're going to sweep around behind Sumail. Even if TPs are ready, this is going to be a quick kill. One, two, and weeping. Sumail goes back to the well. No chance of escape. Great micro for Make. 
just completely caught him out. And even Loaded just doing the small things. Like here, I'll give you a drum pop just to give that extra bit of movement speed to the Centaurs to make sure they get that Centaur stomp initiation off. Because often it can be very hard with Centaurs to land that stun initiation if you haven't got something like an ensnare or a setup from a teammate. So Loaded just making sure they get that kill with ease. Yeah, they did. Oh, looks like Loda wants to make a go here on Arteezy, who's juking through the trees. He does have the Omni Slash, but Arteezy has gone for a couple points of dispersion, so I'm not sure he quite has the firepower to get a solo kill there. Yeah, very tanky build, and even just having a Bracer at this stage of the game probably means that he is somewhat survivable. So at least for now, it does seem like a casual cloak on S4. He's gone back for the point booster, probably rushing the Aghanim Scepter here. <laughs> And it's Alliance with all three cores on top. I, I feel like this has been the case for almost every game we've seen of them on the main stage. Absolutely. Apart from that, I think one game against Secret where they just had such a terrible start with Secret just walking all over them. It's been Alliance just prioritizing winning the laning stage and going from there. And EG's got a great kind of defensive lamp, really good defending. The Plague Wards from the, uh, the, the Venomance Awards is a great tool to have to defend towers, to give you scouting vision to be really just annoying for Alliance to try and push and fight into, but they've still got to find pickoffs. If EG don't start getting some kills, I really worry for them. Well, they are grouping on mid, but again, it's just a very slow chip away kind of push. Well, on the other side, Alliance have already bulldozed the second tower in the bottom lane, so that's two for them, as well as the tier one top. The yep. Chen creeps working their magic all over the map, and this is while Bulldog continues his own farm now, up to 2,000 gold with the Midas already picked up. It's going to be a fast Radiance again. And he's not even the most farmed hero on the team. That title goes to Loda, who it, generally has been getting the Battle Fury for an additional farm accelerant. Yeah, and at some stage of the game, Alliance will just opt to five, man. They they want to make sure they have the protection against the swap, which is the Vengeful Spirit. Splitting up to farm is the one way EG can find those those pickoffs and kills and use that to their advantage. Or going for the wraparound. He is going to get the smoke reveal now. Universe with the Firefly Awake quickly oh retreating. So they dodge the gank. But then the question becomes, do Alliance want to push anyway? Seems not. They're going to back off. So you're trying to just get that level 6. We've seen him in EG series yesterday against LGD on the Witch Doctor just make those amazing defensive plays when EG are getting dived at their towers. They're moving in bottom now. This will be a big kill. There's the swap. Back towards the Chen army. One. Oh, he misses the first stun. Just a little bit too hesitant there to pop it. And Arteezy will survive. He doesn't have a TP though. He may have to dagger again to make his way out of here. I'm not sure if they even saw he didn't have one. If they're not attempting any sort of follow-up. Oh, he dodges the gank, but still he's not farming during this time. Whereas you look at all of the Alliance cores, they're freely just vacuuming up creeps all around the map. Yeah, and it's just like a, a Witch Doctor who's getting some farm priority at top lane, but that's, I mean, it's a comeback here in the sense that he can win you a team fight, but it's not going to be like a big late game carry for EG, so they need to make sure the farm's headed the Spectre's way. The crowd wants some blood. They're looking for Alliance to make that next move aggressively. A lot of time spent and not farming mid. for Spectre. Yeah, that was a full minute plus. And now he's got a TP home. He's gonna head back to the bottom lane, but while he's busy trying to hit creeps, Alliance are wailing away at towers. This is where the Zeus Bender is really good defending. Oh, Universe, he couldn't find the lasso. He's gonna get voided for his trouble. Loda spinning back to safety. They want to at least off the bear here, but the mech is gonna keep Bulldogs buddy in fighting shape. And now S4 wraps around from the south side. They're bringing in Spectre. Even though we didn't get the haunt in, he still wants, EG still showing they want to fight this can by he, rotating can Spectre. Can he really fight into this? No, he's headed back bottom. Uh, well, he's un he's completely indecisive. He, ca he started coming mid. There was spam at the tier 3 tower, which he's like, well... Well, he was really banking on the universe lasso there, I think, yep. which is right when he popped up. And it's very unreliable when there's a bench swap on the other team to instantly counter it. Uh, it hurts. It's the tower down. EG they stole the lasso, delayed. but they just have no no opportunity to use it here. Not only is there the swap, there's also the send back on the Chen as well as the Hand of God. So Alliance have a lot of tools to deal with the burst. Alliance's five man somewhat unstoppable at this point. EG's just looking to delay as strong, as fast as as, as much as possible. Venom Wards, Zeus Arc Lightning, very good tools to defend with. And Alliance able to fight man even pre-Radiant on the bear. They just walk straight into the Roshan pit. They are not afraid of EG contesting this, and there's no real way or incentive for EG to try and stop this. They'd much rather just keep farming on the Spectre in the safe lane, push out the lanes as much as possible, and just prepare for the oncoming assault of Alliance that will happen now. And that's the Relic. 3790 up on Bulldog. They got some good wards down as well. 
I believe S4 also closing in on the Aegonim Scepter. So with that, they're going to have even more map control. You've got the Bear to scout, the Night Stalker to give vision, the Wave of Terror. Alliance, they can really play the vision game with these. And on top of that, Loda is working towards his customary Battle Fury. Well on his way, too. I think he may have a component on the Courier. Yeah, he's already got the Claymore out. Arteezy, this could be bad. He can't afford to die here. Loda, trying to catch him out. There's the Zeus ult. Just looking for a bit of scouting information. Arteezy has done a great job at dodging the ganks. But, again, it, it almost doesn't matter because he's still being limited in yep. terms of his farm. And EG, one kill at 17 minutes in. That is not what they expected when they draft the Zeus, Zeus plus Bat Spectre Rider. with Batrider. Yeah. It should be a kill every time you get the lasso off, but... The Alliance are just playing around that fact. They, they're five manning when they need to. When they're going onto EG's side of the map, pushing, they're, they're five manning. When they fall back in... The only time they split is times like this, when they're just falling back to farm. And I think this these are the times where EG needs to be using smokes, trying to find those pickoffs, sending Batrider right deep on the enemy side of the map even if it's just by himself or with a witch doctor go for these one to two man smoke rotations and try and catch alliance during these passive farming parts of the game when alliance are five manning that's where eg say let's not try and let, let's try and delay it with the the zeus venom but we don't try and take a fight i think their their idea to try and get the lasso mid lane is perhaps not the approach to take against alliance you want to use the lasso around this period when alliance go for the five men that's when you just split away and then do your own thing yeah, the problem is going to be the next time Alliance push, it will be a whole lot faster with the Radiance up on the bear. A lot more damage to smack down the towers as well as fully maxed out passives too. So S4 now, Aghanim Scepter, just about complete. Should be coming out any moment. And with that, I imagine Alliance will be grabbing a gem and looking to really extend their, their vision yep. map and map control here. So they hit their timing. The Radiance... The Aghanims on the Night Stalker, the Battle Fury soon to come on the Juggernaut. You just take everything out. they need. Yeah, and you're taking away EG's really their primary and possibly only way of initiating a good team fight in the Batrider Lasso. When you've got the Night Stalker Aghanim subdivision, it just gets so tricky for EG. If anything, they need to be like just using a smoke to initiate Batrider for the Blink Lasso anytime it's nighttime and Life's gonna get very difficult for EG. As soon as his next nighttime hits, I imagine it's time for Alliance to five man, take down some towers. They've got the bear radiance, they've got the Ag Scepter on S4, and it's all up to Arteezy just to farm away. This may actually be becoming a radiance game just by nature because he needs to go for that big late game item that can actually also deal with the push a bit better. I don't Manta style's more the fighting item. Right now, EG's unable to team fight. They can't take on the five man of Alliance. Seems like Radiance may be more suited to this game. Yeah, Manta isn't really that good when they're five manning because realistically, you're not likely to get much desolate damage against the Lions. He's still a long ways away. He was seeing on like 2.2k net worth. He went for all these early game small items and as a result, we're not looking at a Radiance anytime soon for him. Uh, Alliance will take the second to last outer tower. It honestly feels like they've just had a script, the same script every game, aside from the one that you mentioned versus yep. Secret, and it's being executed to perfection thus far. As for now with the Ags, he gives all the vision they need, so good luck jumping anybody if you are EG. We've yet to see a big lasso. In fact, I think we've yet to see any lassos. The one attempt came on mid, so Alliance, they push into the base, they work on the tower, the bear, Beating away at it very quickly. Pretty down there. They are going to get the last one up onto Loda, but that's not the easiest kill. He just blade furies away. Last one committed. No follow up whatsoever. Spectre does haunt into the fray. But what do they really get out of this? Bat Rider now jumping forward. He's going to get punted for this. Universe is too far. He's overextended. He may go down. The glimmer cape is going to keep him alive. Now Arteezy walks in, but the power's down. They're fighting against the bear bird. This is going to hurt. It might leave a rash. Arteezy lucky to get rooted there. Then the Omni Loda! Executes his counterpart and chases onward. Bulldog grabbing both kills. And Alliance still in full fighting the form here. They've even bought back on the Spectre and the Venno, but that's such a huge bolt investment. The healing ward of Juggernaut just wrecks when they go for these pushes. They put the bear on the high ground. The healing ward's just sitting there, can't be touched, healing up the bear, and EG's forced to go for a risky the play. Back. If he goes down here, RTZ, he can't afford for this to happen. They gotta get him out of there. Where's the root? Bulldog is back before it, and he gets it. 
Universe could be next the here on the high ground with the Death Ward. Is this enough to turn the fight? She's they are getting loaded down. They are going to counterplay if they get two. It's a dieback on the Spectre, though. It's such a huge expense. Yeah, again, though, it's the Fear Witch Doctor keeping EG in this game. But they're overextending LD. The cast is going to catch up too, but they've already lost another core hero in the Batrider. They don't have and any EG. of their carries. It's going to be up to S4 to yep. backstab them if they want to turn this. Oh, PPD. Very low. The creeps might be enough to bring them down here. Ake gets with auto attacks. He now rushes forward. Sumail may also drop. Can he nuke down S4 time? Another void comes out. That's a triple for Ake. A net as oh, well. No escape. And Sumail too will fall. Die back on the Spectre. Team wipe on the rest. The crowd is loving it. EG, not so much. Uh, this Alliance team has won over Minsk Arena through their just dominant play throughout the tournament. And actually, it was a double dieback. The Venom also. Oh, got that. they are looking to seal the deal with two quick, decisive games here. And look at this. This is the game ending next item. The oh. Agonims on the Chen and the Lone Druid actually grabbing a hood. Not Bulldog's customary item, but it seems like they want to get a yep. pipe and then just use that to power their way into the base. Good news is, EG at least killed off the big Granite Golem. So there's no Granite Golem, but he's going to get the Thunderhide Lizard, which is in some ways just as good. You can put that Frenzy on the Lone Druid Bear, I believe, and with that, you've got an even bigger threat for the push. It's just going to be a Alliance, again, put the Spirit Bear on the higher ground, hitting buildings, plop down the Healing Warden. EG's... Like, all this AoE damage from Zeus Arc Lightning, from the Venomancer, ultimate theoretically from the Plague Wards chipping away, just gets negated because of the heals on the side of Alliance. The Chen, the Juggernaut, just proving to be too effective when combined with the pushing power of the Lone Druid. It honestly is at that point where EG can't just sit in the base. If they let Alliance get to the base, they're going to lose a later yeah. Max, almost no matter what. Even with a perfect lasso, the bear is still going to be smacky away at, at the racks the whole time. They probably get the save anyway with the swap. It the feels like EG have to fight outside the base, but at the same time, that's where Night Stalker with an Agonims is at his best. And that maybe even extends to it feels like they have to try and stop Alliance getting another Roshan. If Alliance get an Aegis, oh, you got to imagine. that's going to be so difficult. Yeah, you, smoke is your only friend at that point, but anytime you're kind of missing as five from the map, Alliance probably just doesn't go into the Roshan pit and waits it out on the high ground. They'll take a 5v5 team fight. They'll just do anything probably to not get caught in the Roshan pit since they, they know what that Roche pit did in that secret series to de devote themselves, but more importantly, team secret in two separate games. So it's all syncing up for round two of the death ball. The pipe nearly done on Bulldog, the Roshan. When you're going pipe on Lone Druid, back soon. you know how, how to win the game and when you can and, win the game. And the Vlad's on the Night Stalker. So all of the items on the Alliance just built around the five man Dota. And it just doesn't feel like Arteezy's Radiance is going to come soon enough, perhaps. He's got 3.4k gold close to the Relic, but Alliance may just find the timing before he has Radiance. And even if he gets the Radiance, it doesn't feel like it's going to be enough. When you've got the mech, the pipe, AoE heals across the board and Alliance is just going to negate the majority of the AoE spread damage. EG have to make sure they get off all their spells and they need to find a way to also take out the healing ward of the Juggernaut in these team fights. Or to fight around the cooldown. Like when they use that healing ward to protect the bear, if they can wait till it expires, then go in. Like they lost the tier 3 power and then engage. It was very much like a a kind of planned out timing from EG with that top lane high ground defense because they knew the healing ward was wearing off and they didn't have to worry about any anymore, but they just didn't have the damage. They didn't have the items. And the Alliance say, we don't need Roshans. Let's Screw just go now. Rosh is beside the point. He's a red herring. And this is perfect because the Spectre doesn't have Radiance yet. And if he wants to buy the Relic, he's not going to have buyback. Very close. The bear gets to work now. Quickly bringing down the Rage Rex. The Lasso is there, it's on S4, no swap just yet. The Death Ward comes through, very well played, but they actually drag him out of Death Ward Rage. So S4 is able to tank through it. Loda survives as well. They root up here, and even with the Glimmer Cape, he may end up going down. The Pair of Free Summon does come out. Alliance with the pipe now active. Do they want to back off? The Bear is dropping quickly. Help Alfredo, save him! No, they've lost him again. Universe will end up going down though. There's the trade, no Lasso. This is the push EG have to defend. If they can do this, you now I get the raid. You, you go back to Roche. Yeah. And then you go again. I mean, for EG, they, they're they okay with a little bit of breathing room. It's whether okay that whether or not they're okay defending an Aegis push. And you can see Alliance, they'll TP the Jug bottom. And as soon as EG say that, they can breathe. They're like, okay, sigh of relief. We've got like two or three minutes. We've also got to decide whether we want to just farm in that two or three minutes or whether we want to smoke out, contest Roshan whether we just try and get whatever items we can. 
Like, Zeus has already got pretty much where he's going to be for the high ground. He's got the Veil, the Yules. Veil, like, an essential item pickup in a game like this when you're defending high ground. But other than that, there's not many other big kind of team fight changing items coming. Even something like a mech on Peter is not going to make a big difference. It's just the Radiance. Fear's Aghanim Scepter, though. That may be something, yeah. If you're EG, you're thinking, like, Aegis high ground push coming, let's like, let's sell items just so we can get the Ag Scepter. You may even sell off something like the Treads or the Wands so you can complete an Ags and get that Glimmer Cape ultimate off. Alliance have to be ready to cancel. They've got the gem on the S4 Night Stalker. And I think they will, I mean, they will have definitely watched and studied those LGD replays and they know Fear on Witch Doctor, do not let him get off a big death I mean, this game, it's going to be tougher because there's the Aghanim's gem Night Stalker, yeah. so. The Glimmer Cape will not keep him safe. He's really got no defensive supports to help him out. That's where Universe maybe comes in. He leaves with a Blink Lasso and they use the Venge Swap to deal with the Lasso. Suddenly there's maybe no Venge Swap done to cancel the Death War and it just comes down to a Night Stalker Void. So it could be a situation where Alliance have very limited tools to actually stun Fear. And if Fear positions well, maybe he can find a way around it and get off a good ultimate. And they're going to just look like they have time to finish off this Radiant. So EG. They'll have most of the piece of the puzzle. Will they get Fear's Aghanim Scepter and the Radiance? That's going to be the big question. There's a T2 tower in the way, and EG well, I, just I, hoping they can get everything together. I think together. if he does want it, God, for this push, he's going to have to sell items, but I'm not sure he even has enough if he does. Still only a 1,000. He'd have to sell everything, basically, to get the eggs. I think Spectre trying to get a T2 tower up top just to try and get that little bit of extra gold boost, and there's the Radiance. Okay, he's got Radiance. No says. buyback, though. This is just barely by the skin of his teeth. They are going to mail the bear. The last one comes out. It's the swap to cancel it. Beautifully done. The bear now backing off the Death Lord. Oh, it's missing. Well. And it's not really enough damage. They, they tie back for now. But the Chen Army does drop quickly. They've already committed the heal for this. S4 also taking some heavy damage. RTZ charges in. He wants to get aggressive. The cast is there. But they uh, turn on him with the Omni. Dead for a minute. No buyback ready. And Alliance now spin forward, engaging aggressively. The Aegis gets popped, the bear moving on to fear, keeping him out of the fight. There's no Death Ward, there's no Deuce Hold, there's no Lasso, there's no answers for EG. Buyback for their only hope. But these are heroes without their big combo. Deuce Hold has come off cooldown for now, but Ake stands his ground. He's man fighting against the EG army. It seems the Sumail Bolts might be enough to drive them back. Ooh, Ake almost more. dead, and they do get him. Zap number one, Bolt number two, Ooh. EG with the Zeus buyback, able to turn the fight. It took him a Witch Doctor buyback as well, but this is what EG have to do. They've just got to keep on stalling. Keep, even just for this one lane of racks, it's worth using these buybacks, just because every time you hold against the Aegis push, suddenly Alliance, they've got to wait either like seven or eight minutes for another Roshan, or they've got to go for a much riskier push without Aegis, because Loda's always on the front lines. He knows that if he gets lassoed, he's got the swap behind him, he's got the Aegis, he can fight into EG, despite all the AoE magic damage coming out of the Veil, vale, the Venno, the Zeus. This AoE damage from EG is brutal, but an Aegis on Juggernaut makes it a whole lot easier, and that's something Alliance won't have for some time. Yeah, I wonder if they slow down or if they just go right back, knowing buybacks are on cooldown for quite a few heroes. They are still leading by 20,000 gold. Incredible that EG's even been able to hold this long. Absolutely ridiculous. Oh, fear. Imagine if they weren't down 20k. Fear though, trying to run away, but S4 on the hunt, he gets off the initial void. Oh, Witch Doctor, very tanky. And Fear's gotta be thinking like, uh, where can I get farm on the map? What will Alliance that buyback do? buyback kills him though. He yep. probably would have had the eggs by now if he didn't have to. Or been very close. Brutal stuff for EG. It, at this point, if you're Alliance, it feels like Sumail is public enemy number one. The amount of damage he's yep. dishing out here with the Veil is absolutely ridiculous. And that's why I wonder, do Alliance just say, screw it, let's get some BKBs here. Even a BKB on the bear. The because the thing that's nuking him down is, is the, the Zeus, by and large. Yeah. And they've got the pipe, but honestly, pipe, it's its not enough. The barrier protection against... One bolt with the Veil, I think, instantly removes it. <laughs> it's like two Arc Lightnings with Veil removes all of the pipe as well from your entire team. So it's its not really cutting it on its own. It's great for the bear because he takes so much, the spirit bear takes so much damage. So even like the self magic resistance keeps that spirit bear alive so much longer. But for Alliance, they may just say, let's get a BKB on Jug. Let's get a BKB on the spirit bear as well. The Night Stalker, a possible follow up item. But right now, S4 is on 3.5k gold. He's going to have to make some decisions. And items like to give you more Roy to be like a heart just aren't going to be that effective when it's percent based damage coming out of Zeus. 
Yeah, I, again, BKB seems like it could be the next pickup for a lot of the Alliance heroes. If he wants to help the Siege, AC perhaps, but yep. he does. pretty much all their cores feel very killable as long as Zeus is standing his ground. Well, Alliance, they know EG will not be kind of doing any really risky movements out of their base to, or out, like, as individual heroes to farm, because that's going to be where Alliance picks them apart, they have no buyback games over. So EG, if they're making any movements, it's going to be together as five. There's not going to be any like, okay, let's send one hero to riskily farm the bottom lane while someone else farms top, someone else farms mid. Try to get a catch with the Zeus ultimate, but as soon as it gets thrown, Nightstalker immediately scurrying away. Well, all the people praying for game three, I'm sure are just wondering, how can EG hang on? They are getting time here on Arteezy. He's been allowed to split push. They haven't really tried to gank him, and he does close in on his next item. So, as for the Spectre here, gods, what are you thinking? Is this a, a Manta? Do you go straight into a heart? A blade mail? Manta ultimately going to allow you to tank up a lot better against the Juggernaut Omni Slash, which for most fights has been a big... It's cool really bringing it down, the yeah. Too. And I think it just gives you a little bit of extra damage, wave push with the radiance illusions, and it's it's going to be probably your best friend as far as this 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 game goes. BKB's coming. S4 has one. Loader building one. How and... about Alfredo? What's Alfredo getting? <gasps> Possibly thinking the AC first. Yeah, that's that's going to give them the damage they need. And... Uh, like if EG want, they can commit on the Spirit Bear, but then I think they're losing the team fight if they're throwing too many spells and focusing on that Spirit Bear. Oh, they're gonna find Universe here, swap into a quick stun with a Void there as well. A pick on Universe can be very big, but the Veil comes down. That bolts in about a third of S4's HP off the bat. And Universe, Silence. speaking of the bat, blinks in looking for a lasso, but he was silenced. A Void again from S4 with the 10 second BKB about to go and pull down. They're gonna need a root to engage into this. PPD, glimmering and retreating. We'll make it out. Nice disengage coming out from the side of EG. And he losses at this stage of the game, which is brutal. And that's a 10 second BKB. So, I mean, EG are playing the long game. For them, any win condition is in the 50 minute plus stage of this game. So, when those BKBs get down to five seconds or less, when they manage to somehow farm up, like the Manta and more on Spectre, get more items on heroes like Zeus. But for Alliance, they want to end things in the next 10 to 15 minutes, either now or with the next agent. Yeah, going bottom, an interesting choice when that melee racks is exposed top, but that's because Arteezy is pushing out the lane. Yeah. Very much he just like a positioning to farm. Thing. They almost found a kill mid lane, and then there was no lane to push elsewhere, so... I mean, that Spectre clock is slowly ticking, Gods. He's getting a lot of space, a lot of time, especially after the rough start he had. It's yeah, still loaded, like, like, he's so fun, and he can just do this. He blades through on the high ground, starts hitting the building, and bit by bit, Alliance will get closer and closer. Oh, the rune. The, the rune base. might be the death of PPD. The mech comes through. Wow! Loda just smashed him down! And then carves up the bat! Paddle Lasso has no buyback, no buyback either on the Panel Man, so this is going to be an incredibly tough hold. They've already lost one random frag. Maybe Alliance even go for a second off the bat. That uh, seems like they're rotating for it. Oh, all of the chain creeps get low, get immediately healed back up as well. EG, it's do or die for them. They'll have a Spectre buyback for this last fight. Oh, they're going for Vegas here, but the, this could be the tie turner. This could be. It's gonna be tough to get it off. They have a swap, and there's no lasso. Yeah. Dark easy. Head in the middle of the fight. I believe he does have buyback. He's gonna have to use it as he gets nuked down by the Chen. It's the buyback on him. The death ward's going, but it's no. not critical damage. The life is back away, and they rotate on the top. The Megas are coming out, and GG! What Alliance a is back! The Swedes have done it. They take down EG in dominant fashion. Neither game could EG even get a no. What a performance from Alliance. The road they took to get here, taking down Secret, Liquid, and EG. Three teams at the Major and doing so in convincing fashion. That makes them a scary contender going to Shanghai. At this point, they have got to be the team that everybody is looking at going into that major as well. And what a surprise.